What is up, Mother Hubbard? It's time for an alternative paper review. First up to the Telegraph this morning, who lead with Channel 4 in diversity row over white bosses. It continues, Chairman criticises new board members as MPs defend appointments that are made on merit. Now, really what this story is, is the Chairman of Channel 4 has written back to the Culture Committee and indeed his own staff saying, I don't know if the submissions for the new non-executive directors to join the board, I don't know if they are sufficiently diverse that they would reflect the rest of the organisation. And the reason that he's done that is because if you look at it just boilerplate mathematically, if 30 to 40% of your staff are people of colour, people who have a sort of ethnic origin to them, but only 15 to 20% of your board are people of colour, that to me suggests that there is some sort of restriction, some frustration is happening to stop people of colour making it up to executive director roles. But that is clearly a layer too deep for tokenistic face value Tories who are like, no, 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 you just give it to the person that's best qualified. Which is like, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you interview four candidates and one is a standout candidate, you should give that role to the candidate. But look at it, like, pan out a bit. Why are there no candidates coming up to these roles that match this description. So is there a conversation that needs to take place about responsible employers unblocking people of color so they're in a better position to apply for some of these jobs? Or indeed, is there a piece around education, you know, enlightening CEOs, CFOs, in terms of the benefits of being more diverse? Because this is the thing, man, like this isn't an edge case. Like you often see these stories banded around and it's always spun with the narrative that is like, successful white guy was overlooked for a role because they were only interviewing black people for it, you know? But it's never written or reported in a way that reflects the actual benefits of diversity. Like Deloitte, Boston Consulting Group, Harvard did a study on this. Like if your company or corporation is more diverse, that breeds more innovation, different ideas, different ways of doing things. Plus your product suite might appeal to a whole different subset of people. Rooted in the fact that those people, that market can now see that people like them have played a role in the development of that product. So again and again, we see the benefits of diversity. So like when it's reported in this way by the Telegraph or indeed by any other right wing rag, I'm always like, why does it have to be this story? Why does it have to be like, oh, the white guy's getting overlooked? Why can't it just be a commercial corporate decision that it actually makes sense to take this slightly different route? And like on top of that, it's fairer. Next to the Express, where it feels like we're on day 10 of coverage about this post office scandal. Anyway, the Express and the Mail and the Sun are endlessly churning out stories about this story. The Express this morning saying, why are police failing to deliver on post office scandal? Now, it's quite interesting, I think, that they're choosing to really flog this dead horse, like right to its death. Like it's a it's quite astounding story, admittedly. These people getting hauled over the coals, some of them getting threatened with prison time, um, and it turns out that it's just an IT glitch. It's hugely unfair. It's a sort of consumerist, you know, working class, relatable story of a wrong that needs to be righted. However, I do think it's interesting that the right-wing tabloids are jumping like they're not letting this go. It's stories within the story. It's expanding it out. It's about, oh, what did Ed Davey, the Lib Dem minister at the time, what did he do? And what does this say about Keir Starmer? Because he was director of public prosecution. Like, they're really hammering it. And the reason they love this story is because it's not a story about the Tories. It's not a story about the cost of living, your mortgage exploding. It's not one about government incompetence and corruption. Conversely, they're trying to make this a story about Labour. <laughs> like, Keir Starmer was director of public prosecution, so why didn't he take this on? Because it was public prosecutions. <laughs> This would have been a private one. Back in the day, this was the Royal Mail prosecuting its employees. Got nothing to do with him. Anyway, so that's why they're flogging this dead horse to death. Now, for what it's worth, I do think this whole thing was outrageous. You know, I personally am pretty disgusted by it. And I'll tell you what, this might just be the catalyst that finally makes me move from letters to emails. One of the stories within a story the last few weeks has been why wasn't anything done about this earlier? Why is it taking so long for the press to jump onto it? I even saw a tweet by Nigel Farage yesterday saying these people have been so let down. It's been an abysmal failure of journalists, of politicians, you know, and it really got me thinking. I was like, yeah, 
Yeah, they have been let down, haven't they? If only Nigel Farage had been personally caught up in this 10 years ago, Fleet Street would have wanked itself limp to report on his plight. Anyway, that's it from me. I'm off for my morning cry. Uh, but before I go, do consider joining my YouTube community. You should be able to see a little button down here that says join. Until next time, be gone.